Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. My name's Jason and I have been wanting to make this video for months and I'm finally just going to hit record and do it. I have been wanting to show you these two essential Linux gaming tools and I wasn't sure exactly how to present them to you. But ultimately, I just decided, let's get these tools installed and use them and just show you how incredible they are. So the first one is Mango HUD. And this is an overlay, a gaming overlay, uh, that supports both OpenGL and Vulkan. And it shows you all kinds of useful stuff, your frames per second. Uh, you can have it display a frame time graph. You can have it display your CPU frequency and temperature and load, GPU frequency, temperature, load, VRAM, RAM, really just incredible stuff. Not only that, there is an additional awesome layer to Mango HUD, and it's this, flightlessmango.com. So Mango HUD is not just an overlay, it's also this really beautiful benchmarking tool. So check this out. Mango HUD lets you toggle on and off benchmarking and then it logs it to a CSV file. So you can upload those CSV files to flightlessmango.com and look what you get. Absolutely beautiful charts and graphs and data. Just, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous results. And it creates this all automatically based on this text file. But Mango HUD is pretty much a CLI tool. And so, meet your Linux gaming savior, Benjamin, who has created a tool called Goverlay. And as the name suggests, it is a tool for managing Linux gaming overlays. And this is, is extraordinary because you install Goverlay and Goverlay installs Mango HUD for you, lets you manage it, lets you manage the colors, the text, the size, the data that gets presented, even the benchmarking itself. So it's just an incredibly useful tool and I wanna show you how to get it installed, get it running, and um, maybe show you a few scenarios that it might be uh, really useful to you as well. Benjamin has made getting Goverlay installed pretty straightforward. Granted, you uh, you might have to do it from the command line, depending on your distribution. And some might have Goverlay in their um, software centers, their, their app stores, which is fantastic. If you're one of those distros, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So you have pretty straightforward options for Arch, pretty straightforward options for Fedora, same for Solus, same for Debian. But when you get into the Ubuntu-based distros, like I'm using, I'm using Kubuntu uh, 2104, you'll just have to add a repository and then install Goverlay from there. It's a few quick lines, and uh, we'll do that together. Let's just knock this out. So we're going to add the repository with this line. And then we're going to type sudo apt get update, and that's going to refresh the available packages that we have to install, and then simply sudo apt-get install Goverlay. And yes. Now, you'll notice that not only did Goverlay get installed, but some libraries got installed, and Mango HUD got installed as well as Vulkan tools. So, what do you say we just go for it, huh? <laughs> Let's just uh, close the browser, close the terminal, and let's fire up Goverlay and check it out. Now, the first thing that you might notice is that Goverlay is meant to be kind of a Swiss army knife of, uh, of overlay management tools. So it's going to manage Mango HUD for you and also this VK Basalt, which I've never used. And I hope I, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly. And Replay Sorcery, which is... If you remember at one point, there were dedicated tools from NVIDIA called uh, Shadowplay and then one from AMD called Radeon Relive or Relive. And those are both instant replay tools where you kind of have like a constantly recorded buffer of gameplay and you hit a command and it automatically grabs the last 30, 60, 90 seconds of gameplay 
and throws it into an MP4 video file or an MKV video file. That capability now is built right into the GeForce and Radeon drivers, but uh, there was really no tool for Linux aside from the replay buffer on OBS. But uh, getting it installed, it requires building it from source, and I just didn't want to go that far into the weeds. And so maybe at a later date, we can revisit Goverlay and also add uh, replay sorcery into the mix. But for now, we just want to focus on Mango HUD. So as you can see, this is already infinitely nicer than managing something in the terminal. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a very straightforward, clean looking management tool for Mango HUD. And you're gonna see how cool Mango HUD is in a second. But for now, let's get this set up. So by default, I believe it's gonna show us uh, our frames per second and our frame times for the Vulkan API. But I wanna, I want it to show quite a bit more. And you know what? We've got, let's start with GPU. We've got a Radeon 6800 XT in here. So I wanna change this to red. And you can also rename it. GPU is just boring. So why don't we say RX 6800 XT. So we want to show the average GPU load and we wanna show the core frequency and the VRAM. And the memory frequency. No, let's not let's not go overboard. We'll just do uh, VRAM and average load. Now over on the CPU side, uh, let's go ahead and do the same options. Average load, and we'll also tick our RAM because I'm doing uh, I'm doing 4K gaming, so I like to keep an eye on how much both uh, RAM and VRAM is is being used, just out of simple curiosity, really. We're gonna add a frame time graph. And of course, we're gonna add FPS. Okay, so I've got some options set here and I'm going to save it. And if I wanna see what it looks like without actually having to launch a game, I can just click run. Look at that, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? So what you're seeing here on the left is OpenGL and on the right, Vulkan. And we can see that we've got our RX 6800 XT load, the 3900X, which is our Ryzen CPU, uh, VRAM and RAM consumption, even a frame time graph here on the bottom. And I think that's enough information to show. I mean, you can, you can go crazy if you want to. Let's add some, let's add core frequency and temperatures and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's just a little bit, I don't know, a little bit information overload for me. So we'll leave that stuff off. And you've also got five preset locations on your screen where you can put Mango HUD. And you can mess with the font size here. Uh, and this is a nice touch. I've got a 4K screen, so I want to use this 38 DPI size. Okay. One quick preview. That looks really, see, that looks really nice. That looks good. Okay. Great. So we have this configured. We have it saved. And if you want to get into the benchmarking side of things, let's take a quick look at the logging area. So the default toggle key is gonna to be Shift plus L plus F2. So before you set this, you just wanna make sure that that's not going to trigger any other shortcuts or actions or custom commands on your PC. And again, we can test it by just clicking Run and then Shift L F2. And notice that you get this uh, red, kind of a red recording icon here. So Shift, L, F2, and it turns off, and then logging finished. Isn't this nice? I'm geeking out over this. <laughs> I love that we have tools like this and that they're so easy to manage. Okay, but where did those logs go? Where did those logs go? That's a good question. They went into, I didn't set that up yet. They went into my home folder somewhere, but you know what? I don't, I don't want them to go there. I have a dedicated folder for that. JSON documents benchmarks. Okay. 
save. So let's run this again. And let's capture some benchmarks. Okay, again, you see the uh, recording icon is, is there. So we've got a nice visual indicator that it is logging the data. And yeah, spoiler, it's gonna be a solid 60 FPS, but that's, that's not the point of this exercise. <laughs> so Shift L F2 again to stop logging. And now let's go and see what we have saved. So you see here, we have it actually automatically named it to GLX Gears and VK Cube. And so we've got these CSV files. Now this is, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of confusing data, but it's basically whatever you have chosen to display on Manga HUD is what it is going to log to this file. Now, one very, very important note about Goverlay. If you want it to be displayed on basically everything that's running OpenGL or Vulkan, uh, so if you want it on all of your games, you want to click this toggle right here, global enable, and then you'll need to restart your system. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this toggled on just so that we can launch a bunch of games and have some fun. And let's start with something native, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay, first I wanna go into our graphic settings and we are going to up this to 4K, full screen on. highest settings possible. Now we're going to get a lot of this critical information in the benchmark result for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but there's there's a bit of a there's a method to my madness. So <laughs> bear with me. There we go. See? There's our little red record icon up there. Now while this is running, I'll explain why I want to also log the frame data with Mango HUD because I want to use the Flightless Mango website to compare how does this game perform when I'm recording at 4K with OBS versus not using OBS at all. I wanna see what kind of an impact that has on my system. So I'm gonna do two different runs, one with OBS running and recording like it is now, and then one with it not, and I'm gonna take those two CSV files that Mango HUD and Goverlay automatically create and save for us, upload them to the Flightless Mango site and look at the results. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through that process with you guys. And there we go, we have our little logging finish display. And we've got the benchmark results even before Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows us. Okay, so I did both runs of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one while recording with OBS at 4K and one with OBS not running at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Flightless Mango, log in here via our Discord, and we're gonna go to User Benchmarks and search for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And you can see existing ones if you want. Um, let's, let's check one out here. Native Vulcan, RTX 3090, okay, cool. So let's go back and let's submit our own benchmark. So we're going to call this shadow, let's make a shadow of the Tomb Raider OBS on off. <laughs> this isn't a very catchy or professional name, but uh, okay, let's add a description. So let's now browse to our benchmarks folder. And we'll upload both of these and open. Boom. Okay, and we can even customize by color. Do you see that? So what I did is I just renamed these uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider 4K Max, no OBS, Shadow of the Tomb Raider 4K Max with OBS. I don't know, those colors are fine, I guess, but <laughs> just for the, the sake of changing them, just because we can. Let's go blue and orange, okay. Update benchmark, you ready? Let's view it, let's, let's view it. There we go, look at this. 
the magical tools of Mango Hut and Goverlay did this for us. <laughs> All we had to do was upload the files that it created. This is this is just gorgeous. Okay, so our uh, so no OBS. You can you can see just at a glance that our frame times are a little bit nicer, and our FPS is a little bit higher. And note that you can uh, you can choose each one; and it'll highlight it for you. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous tool. I'm I'm in love with it. Okay, let's go down to our frame times, and you can see frame times a little bit lower, and lower frame times yield higher frames per second. But let's look at the more standard charts here. So. This is going to give us, let me uh, make this a little bit larger here. Okay, so this is without OBS running. And we can see that our average is 80 FPS and our 1% minimum is 65 FPS. Now with OBS running and capturing at 4K, we go down by 10 FPS and our 1% minimum actually drops below 60 frames per second. So we can see very clearly that it's having an impact. And this right here is an easier way to glance at that down here on the bottom. Our average without OBS is 80 and our average with OBS running is 70. So if that's something you can live with, why not? I certainly can. And again, you can do the same thing here with the bar charts. You can uh, hover and highlight. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's great for it's great for doing benchmarking videos. I'm going to make this um, probably a more regular thing now that I've got this installed and configured and I'm kind of refreshed on on how to use it. I've got to use it more. And oh, and another great tool. You can let's view this in full screen. OK. Or. Let's go back down to this chart. We can print it. We can download it as an SVG vector, PDF, JPEG, or PNG. Uh, I mean, just talk about a useful tool, Mango HUD and Goverlay for the win. But Mango HUD isn't just about a beautiful overlay and benchmarking capabilities and, you know, giving you very cool graphs. It also has another trick up its sleeve, and it's right here in the performance section. By default, this is going to be unlocked, and you probably want it that way, but there are some scenarios where I could see wanting to actually limit my frames per second. Let me show you why, and I'm going to use Doom Eternal as an example. Here we go. Now, as this launches, keep your eye on the top right of the screen. These are going to be some obscene FPS figures. 600, 700... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna cross the thousand FPS threshold now. And now what happens is with my card and many many graphics cards, you will get something called coil whine. It's this very high pitch frequency that comes from the card when your uh, when your FPS is super super high. Now that might not be a big deal to you, but it's it's just a it's a little annoyance for me. And in some systems that can also increase the heat output. So imagine you're on a laptop for example, maybe you're on battery or you just, you know, you want to preserve the lifetime of your laptop and you're playing something like Dota 2, which uh doesn't take a very monster system to produce high frame rates. So, here's what we can do. We can just simply lock our FPS globally at, let's say, 120, or you can create a custom uh, performance limit as well. So to call it a, it's a performance governor, basically. So now we're going to launch Doom Eternal again with the performance limiter set to 120 FPS. And there you can see it in the top right. It's not going to cross that. So this has a lot of benefits depending on your specific situation. You know, maybe if your system is powerful enough to lock it at a steady 120 FPS, you might not get as much screen tearing. Um, and that crashed all of a sudden for some reason, because, you know, Proton is not perfect yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this is another nice addition to the Goverlay Mango HUD package. Another use case for me is a game that doesn't have 
a built-in benchmark. And uh, maybe I want to test the performance at various resolutions or with various graphic settings. And I want to either see that data in real time or be able to maybe just do a race or do a multiplayer match and log that data and check it out later. So let's launch Dirt Rally 2.0. It's another uh, Proton enabled game. Okay, so I'm running Dirt Rally 2.0 at 4K with a refresh rate of 120 and basically graphics cranked all the way up. So I can already tell I'm probably not going to hit 60 FPS with these settings just by glancing up here at Mango HUD. So I might want to either reduce my resolution down or just kind of tweak the uh, the graphic settings a little bit. But let's play for a few seconds and see what we have. Oh, I jumped the start. Oh, well. This is kind of beautiful. Okay, 60, 64... Oh my god. Yeah, I haven't played this game in a while. <laughs> this game is terrifying. Alright, so I'm actually hitting, I'm hovering right around 60, so I am okay with that. And yes, I know that you've got your um, Steam overlay, which will display the F FPS, but uh, this is just so much sexier, you know? Plus, it's got the logging capabilities. Because this is another game that I'd like to benchmark across different, uh, you know, different distros and different versions of Proton. So that is Goverlay and Mango HUD. And again, all you need to do is go to the Goverlay GitHub page, which I'll have linked in the description, and just follow the very simple instructions. And you'll also have Mango HUD at your disposal via this beautiful, just great app. And uh, he's always working on this. He's always open to feedback and criticisms and feature requests. So uh, definitely reach out to him either via GitHub or his Twitter account, which I will also have linked in the description of this video. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. Make use of it. Uh, let me know how you are going to use Gopherlay and Mango HUD down there in the comments. And until we chat again, you guys take care, take care of each other and get your game on. See ya.